Good evening. My name is Alexander Hagen. I'm the CEO of a medium-sized tech company. I'm a delegate for Bernie Sanders. Uh, previously, I was a financial analyst and financial journalist and a research engineer. And I wanted to speak to you tonight about the Democratic Convention Day 3. <clears throat> so I listened to Biden. I listened to Panetta. I listened to Obama. Uh, Thank God for Bernie delegates uh, chanting no to war and lies, lies, lies. Uh, when Panetta tried to beat the drums of the military industrial complex. <clears throat> so, you know, there's over a million people in this country with classified uh, status, uh, busily spying on every possible threat uh, to us. Uh, many of these threats are uh, potentially people like you and me, people that might be on the wrong Facebook session or the wrong YouTube session. So a million of them is an awful lot of people to keep tabs on us. And the majority of private contractors that are paid over $100,000 a year. And uh, they don't like it when you find out about them. That's what happened to Barrett Brown, basically, uh, when he broke into uh, Stratford's uh, mail, which is a bunch of retired generals in the uh, revolving door between consulting and public office. Uh, appointed uh, public sector work. Uh, so, you know, we've got this massive Clinton patronage system. Its tentacles extend everywhere. Uh, we weren't able to stop it in adequate time. Uh, we can second guess Bernie's decisions. Uh, obviously, uh, his actual nomination of Clinton was a uh, gut wrenching experience for us. I uh, really felt like I was physically ill and uh, nothing to do with my opinion of Clinton or Sanders, or why he did it. It just was a physical illness. Uh, uh, so, uh, <clears throat> you know, the, the uh, Democratic establishment sounded like uh, the Republican Party tonight, and uh, I guess they intended to. So they think they've done enough to placate those on the left who will vote for them, and now they're trying to roll right, apparently. Uh, attack to the middle in the uh, general type of thing. Uh, Throw just enough bones to keep uh, an extremely arrogant attitude towards the entire progressive movement. They say they're progressive. They don't join the Progressive Caucus in Congress. There's about 70 members, 40 members of the Progr Progressive Caucus in Congress. How come all these guys that are progressives aren't in the Progressive Caucus? They never have been. They're not progressives. Uh, so uh, it was a real kick there. Oh, what little bit benefit that to get them one or two states in an area that Clinton's already very strong. She's strong in the national security heartland. Uh, and Panetta was making very clear that the national security establishment, the police state, deeply favored her. And thank God the Sanders people rallied against it. And Joe Biden tried to show populism, claiming that people like us, claiming his middle class roots. Uh, and Joe Biden really has no business talking about people like us. It's just not the right line. It's toned up. I don't know who wrote it for him. But the whole speech was a charade and a spectacle of attempting to manipulate people's emotions or the fellow is off his rocker. The idea that Americans never bend and never break, uh, it lacks reality. Uh, it lacks reality uh, and it doesn't address the real problems facing our country. Obviously, the... Uh, the, the uh, Incumbents want to defend the system, apparently, and I'm not sure that uh, it works. Uh, I don't know why you would want to defend a record where uh, no uh, banker went to jail, wealth concentration got worth, worse. Uh, none of these uh, conflict zones that have been spawned have stopped uh, oozing pus, uh, most of which uh, American bombs rained on heavily at some point to get us to this point. Afghanistan was nothing like it is now. When the Russians were fighting there, we never don't know what it would have ended up like, but without the Americans funneling in advanced weaponry in Afghanistan, the roots of Al-Qaeda wouldn't have been formed the way they did. Uh, so uh, so uh, Biden did call out Putin by name. It was what I was dreading all night long, uh, that uh, they would uh, rattle their sabers at Russia tonight, and indeed all of them did. Uh, uh, I didn't see Obama do it, but I saw Panetta do it uh, much more so. And of course, we're pissed at Russia because Russia uh, stopped 
uh, Syria from uh, uh, being pulled out of the Russian sphere of influence. Uh, so uh, the way we destroyed Libya, of course, any Russian bases, facilities, trade ties, oil ties were all severely disrupted, uh, and their trade has not gone back to what it was. Uh, their um, relationship has not gone back to what it was, although with the government over in the West, the legitimate government, I'm sorry, the East, in uh, Tobruk, uh, the relations have improved a lot with Russia, which is quite interesting. Uh, but uh, we're pissed at them about that. Uh, in Turkey, it looks like this conservative uh, uh, Islamic group that sort of uh, 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 has a very nice sounding message of us teaching science and math to young people and teaching service and selflessness. Uh, but the group has a dark side, has a deep state operation inside Turkey uh, to pull everything under their uh, uh, tentacles, it appears, uh, I'm uh, sorry to say. And uh, they seem to have allied with the CIA uh, in spreading these uh, religious schools throughout the Central Asian republics that used to be in the Soviet Union uh, so that they could create a conservative bulwark. Because who do we ally with? Conservatives. When we tried to overthrow Allende, in Chile, and succeeded replacing with Pinochet. Uh, what did we do? We allied with the conservatives. Everywhere we go, we allied with the conservatives. So now we've discovered that democracy, true democracy in the Middle East, is too explosive to allow. Uh, it is, there's too much pent up anger if people actually are able to rule their own selves. Um, and they're not going to respond well to this night of orgiastic exceptionalism that did not have any self awareness about other terrible catastrophes and our own role in it in the world. Uh, and if the, uh, and what is this all about? It's about policies, it's about you and me and the policies we want. It's not about them praising themselves. Uh, you know, uh, so it was quite disgusting uh, for me and upsetting because it didn't uh, inflect back into a humanity at any point. For me with Biden, it, it seemed artificial. It's a lot of pressure to be in front of 10 or 20 million people. Uh, and uh, with Obama, it was the same thing. It felt very slick and it felt very unreal. It didn't seem like he really, uh, but you know, Obama has different uh, pitch styles. One of them is, you know, I never said it was going to be easy for us to solve all these problems overnight. Uh, but look how far we've gotten. This, uh, he, he has a sort of pleading urgency in his voice and it doesn't ring true to me when he talks that way. Uh, uh, what rings true to me is sometimes it's sort of a cocky, uh, sarcastic. Uh, uh, I mean, there are certain ways he can come across where he seems to uh, think, uh, you know, highly of a policy or a plan uh, and uh, talk as if you and I are on both the same side, really, and not just justifying the status quo and the ruling class and making it sound like we'll all get our slice of bread if we're patient. Uh, so I was very deeply disappointed tonight. It sounded more like a Republican gathering than a Democratic gathering. The clouds of war gathered on the stage and rumbled off stage. Uh, as the Democrats angry at being denied Syria, angry at being uh, uh, engaged in the Ukraine where the U.S. is pulling the country one way, a country that's half ethnically Russian, basically, and Russia's pulling it the other way. And we haven't been any better than they are. Uh, uh, both players have been playing. And, uh, but Russia is in their backyard. You know, I went to see a friend of mine who's a congressperson's uh, relative. And they were saying, well, what about the South China Sea? And I said, well, you know, it's China. What's it called? The South China Sea? Uh, this is their backyard. You have to have a little bit of respect when you go to somebody else's backyard and say, hey, you know, I'm sorry, but you shouldn't treat your dog so bad. It's, uh, you, you can do it. But it is their backyard. Uh, it's not, uh, with the U.S., we're right in their faces. We have military bases, boom, land, you know, uh, 500 miles from their border in uh, Afghanistan and Iraq and uh, with China and South Korea bristling with bases. Uh, in Thailand, I think we have, we certainly did have bases at one time. I uh, certainly do in Philippines. Uh, so we're right up in their faces. If they were doing this, you know, Russia would have a military base in uh, Venezuela and China would have a military base in uh, Hawaii at the very least or, uh, I don't know, uh, 
uh, Guatemala. I mean, uh, we're perched all around these powers. Uh, so it was very disappointing. Um, but I do feel that the Bernie Sanders movement is alive and well and not just taking this lying down. Fine. We'll have some of the units inside uh, trying to get the legislation passed to help raise the standards for the people and level the playing field and root out corruption. But we need a real attorney general uh, once we get a, a, a Bernie people into p uh, power uh, who will prosecute the parties for their racketeer influence corrupt organization practices. Prosecute all these people. It is just disgusting when we got 46% of the vote. With all that manipulation, with all that press loading, do they feel any shame or guilt, this ruling class and their media lapdogs? My name is Alexander Hagen. Good night and good luck.